out and start the second topic. All right. So the second topic tonight is to do with religion. OK, I'm not too sure what the question is on religion, but it is religion. OK, it is religion. So um, I know some of you guys might be tuning out or some of you guys might be like, finally, I get to speak about religion. So let's get it. Um, Again, I don't know what exactly you don't want to speak about religion, but let me open it up uh, to my brother Ibrahim, first and foremost. My brother Ibrahim, you came on the show um, a couple of days ago. Uh, um, I think you wanted to say something based upon that. For those of you guys who watched the show um, or didn't watch the show, Ibrahim, I'm going to invite you on to kind of state what the topics were and what you would like to say uh, based upon that last topic. Okay, um, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Asalaamu alaykum, everyone. Basically, um, uh, the other day, yeah, so we, uh, the topic was on um, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I made a big bl blunder. In, 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 a, in one of the statements I made and uh, from the characteristics of you know a Muslim is that if they make a if they make an error in a public place on, on, a, on a platform that they should come back to the platform and that place and retract that openly so uh, that misconception or rather the error uh, is clarified um, and the the claim that I made which is a very uh, which basically is a weak opinion, and some say it's a fabricated opinion, is that I said that uh, when the angel Gabriel came to the Prophet Muhammad, he uh, he transferred uh, the no, verses no. of the Quran to him uh, di directly to his mind. In, uh, and I used the, 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 the way to describe it, I said is, I think, telep telepathy or telekinesis. And that's outrightly incorrect. Um, I, uh, I, I, later I clarified this with some uh, students of knowledge that are studying abroad and they said, they said no this is not correct the correct uh, well there's difference of opinion obviously but the most correct opinion is that when the angel Gabriel came to the Prophet Muhammad he said to him Iqra meaning recite and the Prophet said I you know I, I'm, obviously I'm, I'm, a, I'm illiterate I don't know how, how to and then and then the and then uh, the angel Gabriel he then said Iqra Rabbika Ladi Khalaq like he, he read the whole verse and then he said Iqra again meaning recite and that Iqra basically meant repeat after me and that's how it first started. So Excuse that, that me. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, yeah. um let me just give you like a quick fact. Um the difference between telekinesis and telepathy. So this is when you're moving stuff with your mind. That means you're not physically interacting with the object. Yeah. Telepathy is when you're communicating with your mind, speaking with your mind. I'm just pointing that out. Thanks, bro. You're oh, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, may Allah forgive me for saying that weak opinion. Uh, it's, it's actually, I think it's a, more of a fabricated opinion, something that I read ages ago. And I just wanted to retract it and openly um, apologize to you guys as well for that. It's accepted. It's accepted. Jeez, this is, you know what, yeah. Again, yeah, let me just say, yeah, like sometimes we have to praise, yeah, things that are, you know, absolutely wonderful and great. Like, this is what I love about like real true Muslims. They have principles that they abide by. I don't know how many of us can actually say that if we got something wrong on a public platform, we would now revisit that public platform. Some of us might even go into hiding. Um, but my brother has come out and actually, you know, come on, retracted the statement, clarified where or stated where he was wrong and clarified um, it. So everybody else who heard his words would not be misguided by his words. So I actually love that. I appreciate that. And I wish that more of us can take on those types of principles in our day to day lives and enact upon them. And I hope my other brothers and sisters out there who belong to that uh, same, um, you know, grouping or religious background, um, they can practice that in their normal day to day lives, especially at Speaker's Corner. Thank you, my brother, for coming on and actually, um, you know, giving us the real, real. No problem, no problem. 
But uh, in terms of uh, oh, in, no, terms of else I said, in terms of everything else I said in regards to the speech of Allah and how we believe that Allah speaks uh, with a voice and with letters and words and so on and so forth, and then obviously I don't retract that. I still stick by that, and that's the belief of Ahl Sunnah, i.e. the Salafiyun. Uh, and yeah, if Kalam wants to continue with that, then yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, I saw my sister Sia. She unmuted her mic. Did you want to jump in on something? I just had a I just had a back comment that's not during the subject, like about the subject. But I think I'll pass on on it actually. But I'm okay. not sure if it's allowed to say it. Um, try quickly. No, I don't. I don't want to start problems. You know, I don't want to start problems here on the okay. panel. So, all right, cool. Never mind. Never mind then. All right. So let me quickly uh, run through you guys with the here on ta- um, Talk of the Titans. Talk of the Titans literally has three rules. Three rules. Rule number one is to keep your mics muted at all times at all times keep your mics muted rule number two okay uh if we've got one of our titans speaking we would love for you guys to respect his cipher and not speak or her cipher and not speak when they're speaking okay only speak when you've been given the permission to speak baby only do that if you would like to get in contact with me to let me know that you would like to speak do as gabs is doing right now and just literally just wave your head like crazy and go scala gang Gang, gang squad oh <laughs> yo let me let everybody see what gabs is on right now Coo. oh man hey yeah, yo medicine yeah. man it's popping medicine, man. I just like chilling. That smile. trust me <laughs> peace 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 man just chilling off peace to everyone in the, yes, on, the on the panel big up man. big up big up trust me peace to the chat room man just here chilling what's 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 the topic what's popping Oh man. All right. And the third rule. Okay. I was, I was dropping the rules real quickly. So the first rule is to keep your mics muted at all times. Second rule is to not speak when one of our Titans are speaking. And the third rule is this please, no profanity um, and anything along those lines because it's a family friendly show. Literally, we have children, we have the aunties and uncles that are tuned in and, uh, you know, they like the show. So please, Excuse please, me. please um, hey, abide by those rules. Otherwise, we've got a two strikes and then you're out policy when I'm not sleeping. So um, family, if you've got any questions, um, please drop your questions. I have got a few of them which you've posted up. Right, Cha says, does Islam teach discrimination on a religious basis? Uh, Pat J says, Titans TV topic origin of islam oh sorry of religion okay what is the origin of religion so these are a few of the questions that you guys have dropped so far um but we're going to see what we're going to discuss okay we're going to see what we're going to discuss i don't know any of you guys on the panel um have any religiously orientated questions or topics you would like to discuss in the last uh 40 minutes of the show excuse me I got a question to ask. Start something, maybe. Okay, um, Professor, just one second. Let me go to Kelly Young first because he's he, no problem. He's new to the um, panel yeah, yeah. at present. Yep, we can hear you. I just uh, want to go back to the last topic. It was about the Most High. And I thought Gabs made an interesting point about. I was putting out uh, Psalms eighty-three, verse eighteen. He talked about the most high and God said, why was he talking about the most high over all the earth? And I, after that, you know, uh, the city was home, and, uh, to the common down, and uh, the earth is a symbolic term, actually. It means actually that the earth you know, was also meant the people over the earth. And the people is actually the same uh synonymous to uh, uh, like the way people think uh, like like flashly think flashly thinking it's like synonymous to the, the same thing too and that's like earthly thinking if you can see the connection there it means that god was the most high of all the people over the planet maybe that's an interesting topic but you can go forward you just have to point this out Thank you. 
All right. Um, Professor, um, go ahead. Okay, my question is, am I officially a Titan? Nope, you're not. I hate you. (laughs) 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 But I respect your channel, though. Just ask him. (laughs) All right. Any others uh, that got questions? Yo, guys. Um... I was cu- I saw this discussion with Gabs and Hashim, and um, it was very interesting. Uh, what is your uh, afterthought about that? About the Trinity stuff that he, uh, yeah, how can I say that? He was like uh, three. The Muslims thought of who? How was his name? Hashim thought he was three in one. And and Gab said, yeah, but not three different persons, but one entity who splits himself in three. Yeah, what is your thought about that? Your afterthought, Kalam? Please, I beg you, let me just just ask, speak to this brother. Peace, bro. This is for you, B. Oh, for me. Yeah, oh, it was. Uh, you had that oh, conversation, sorry. Gab. So uh, yes, yeah. yes. Now, nah, thanks for that, sir. Um, yeah, basically, um, do you know what? Yeah. Um, slightly over the last couple, of years, I think what last two years, I could say probably color two years. Like um, this whole this whole Trinity thing is the major, is the main main centerpiece and the main topic, or and the main issue, which which the Muslims and the Christians are always debating. This is the main thing that separates you know. This is the Trinity is the is the is the reason why you have Christians that leave the faith and go to Islam or, you know, you know what I mean? Because, you know, people, the, you know, the amount of debates and things that's been happening, oh, the Trinity, what is the Trinity? All you hear is people talking about the Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. But the the Trinity, the whole talk of the Trinity is so simple to understand. Like, even me, sometimes, me and Brother Kalam just sit there, you know, just in this car, just thinking, why why are people not getting this? Like, it's it's not, it's not, it's not that deep. Thing. Yeah. It's not, it's not that deep. So, Sorry, sorry about digressing here, but uh, back to your point. So with Hashim, what I was basically trying to, to, to explain to him is this. He was saying, he was coming on the, the, along the lines of, you know, uh, who died on the cross? You're trying to say God died. But we're like, what? He's like, God died. So who died? How many people died and all this? And I'm like, bro, um, obviously the person, Jesus, in the flesh, obviously is a human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We know that I, I asked him the three questions. The first question I asked him, I said, is, is, um, is God holy? He said, yes. I said, is God spirit, co- uh, according to the Christians? He said, yes. I said, is God spirit holy? He said, yes. Okay, I said, cool. So first thing, we've got two things. God's eternal, God's holy, um, he, has a, he, he has a spirit, and his spirit is holy. So that's the Holy Spirit already, and that's the God part covered. Now we have to get onto this third person that they keep talking about, yeah, which is Jesus. Now, mm. now, Jesus, we know, you know, Christians know, you know, anybody that knows, Jesus came about because you know the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and she got pregnant, yeah, and conceived a human son. You know, human people say, you know, fully human, fully, uh, fully God you know, but a human son, and they named that son, they named that human being, that son, you know, Jesus, Emmanuel, he has loads of different names, Yeshua, you know, they named him, yeah? Now, when, when, obviously, we know the whole story of Jesus, you know, growing, you know, growing up as a child, and da 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 being uh, baptized, John the Baptist, now we get to the crucifixion. Jesus now is, um, who is God, yeah, according to the Christians, yeah, is now killed, on the cross well first of all the pharisees put him to trial because you know he's saying that he's the one yes he's the messiah he's god he's i am that i am he's saying this is it this is the reason why the jews um had Pilate kill him in the first place do you know what i mean because he was mm. saying he's the messiah he's the one do you know what i mean so now jesus dies on the cross yeah there's the, the, i don't know the problem that hashim has now is he's saying how how can god die if he's a human being and i'm like bro what are you talking about he is unable to make the distinction 
between the flesh and the spirit. And yes, this is what, and this is what Kalama was trying to show him. He's like, bro, the when the flesh, when the physical body dies, your spirit, yeah, does that die as well? He said, no. So then, who are you? What are you? Are you the flesh? You're also you're the flesh, obviously. That's you, but your spirit as well. Yeah. The mind, body, and soul. It's all of it. So when the flesh dies, but when the flesh dies, because that's finite, yeah. When that dies, your spirit, which is you, it still lives on. Exactly. And obviously the spirit, the spirit which Jesus was, was, was God. You know, according to Christians, that's God's spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and you know what's, what's, what's weird also? It's like they talk about an all-powerful God, but this God is unable to, to, be, to control a human body and, and live on after death. Well, humans can yeah. also live on after death and we are limited. So it's, it's so yeah, as if they just dumb it down on purpose to, okay. yeah, I don't know. It's to, to make Islam look better or something. Let me give you a question. Yeah. Now like, watch this um, from the old Testament. Yeah. Even if you're looking at throughout the old Testament, um, how did people, how did they uh, uh, give their offerings to God? What did they do? How did they, you know, show their, what's the thing? How did they, how did they show their worship to God? You know, whenever they did something, they sinned. What did they have to do? Pray, baptize. Uh, no. How do you mean? What That's did they have to offer? So if they're offering something, what do they do? They sacrifice the sacrifice the lamb, innit? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The lamb, remember? They yeah. sacrifice the lamb, you know. Yeah, I'm you know, not a Christian, by the way, and I don't oh. know a lot about Christianity. Oh, okay, but, okay. Yeah. But it, was, it just yeah. baffled me to see how you laid the arguments on the table and mm. as if he just he understood the arguments but just yeah was not honest about it or something and that that's what I, I was curious about your opinion about that about that dumbing down the the trinity and and you know i'm, I'm really yeah how do you feel about that no nah, you know like i said sorry uh, i'm gonna go back to this point yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna answer that question so in the old testament we know that you know offerings to god was being done by sacrifice you know blood sacrifice they were sacrificing mm. all animals abraham had sacrificed a lamb you know moses when the angel of death came they had to sacrifice lambs and put the blood over the houses of the firstborn so they didn't die you know everything to do with sacrifice sacrifice but when jesus came that was to put an end of the sacrificing of the lamb and who was the and jesus became that lamb that's why he's called the lamb of god right jesus is the lamb of god and he had to sacrifice that blood that blood that had to be spilt from the sacrificial lamb jesus took on that sacrificial lamb yeah. the same thing do you see what i'm saying yeah. the sin of man so so that's and that's what that all is and, it, and that's why that is god god came down as the sacrifice the ultimate sacrifice the, the ultimate lamb that's yeah. why it says the lamb was prepared even before the foundations of the earth so that means god was there the only person that was there before the foundation of the earth was god do you see what I'm saying? So if the lamb was prepared before the foundation of the earth, who is that? It's God. God, that's that's him. And the lamb is God. And that was Jesus that came down in in in, in human flesh. Yeah. So now going down into, you know, breaking it down to Hashim now and having to dumb it down. It's not really dumbing it down. It's just, you know, you know, when you're in school, you know, when you went to your, when you was in your class, you had, you know, you, you could be in the same class as you would have probably about 30 students. Every student in your class is not going to be at the same level. You know, you're going to have some pupils, in your class that you know that exceed very well some that struggle and there's someone that's just in the middle do you see what i'm saying mm. so all it is is that we're all in the same class but you know we have people at different levels do you see what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah different and levels bias, and it, and it, of go, on. go on bro yeah and biases of course i mean uh, everybody okay. especially religious people they have a presupposition presupposition that god must be true so <laughs> Yeah, every other religion will be dumped down, in my opinion. Like uh, the M Muslims say, yeah, the Trinity makes no sense. The, the Christians will say Muhammad makes no sense. So, of course, they all have a bias and uh, will dumb each other down. And that was what you can see with Hashim. I think he, he really was, yeah, I think he really was dumbing it down. I mean, if you use your brain, you can see an all-powerful God who who can't become a human is he still all powerful then if he can't become you know i mean it, it makes no sense but the reason why i didn't so this is going to be my last bit and then we can let other people chime in yeah, yeah. um but the reason why i don't i don't even understand why they why they battle with each other anyway because you know the last time he was live on we, we um i think it was brother rich kid pointed out that you know they both 
you know, pray to different gods. They said, who's the God? You know, one God's Allah is, and then um, another brother said, no, they're God's um, Yahweh. Yeah. Mm. Now, and then also, you know, one of the Christians said, uh, for Christianity, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. You know, he dwells within creation and he's everywhere. You know what I mean? And yeah. then on, from the Islamic, from an Islamic uh, point of view, God is outside of creation. He's not in, he doesn't dwell with his creation. Well, that, well, Columbus say that's some Muslims, you know, because there's, you know, other Muslims that do share the view, the same view. But if you, if you really, if you, if, if, if Hashim knows that there are Christians that believe that God is omnipresent and that he can dwell within his, in, in, in his creation, if they, if they're saying that God came down as a human being and died on the cross in their, in the Bible, why are you even arguing the case? If you know, that's what they believe. And that's what they say. Whereas if you don't, if you're not, if you're saying that, in you know in your scripture that you know god doesn't come down you know then yeah. then so be it then obviously that's just just leave it to your doctrine then if they say god came down god is omnipresent in their in their text and it says he came down and he walked on earth and da, 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 i don't understand what the argument's about you know what i mean it's not about egos at the end of the day if god came down or he didn't come down then the main the main goal is that you know god came down to try and help the human beings that's the main point. The main purpose is help the human beings. Yeah. Get on the right track, you know, believe, believe and worship your God and you can get to the promised land. That's it. Yeah, doesn't that's matter right. if he came down as a man, as a goat, yeah. as a, as a, as a, as a flying horse, as a, as a flower, as a burning bush. Does, does, why does it matter? You shouldn't yeah. be arguing over these little silly things. The, like the, you the, said, the end it, result it, is to be a good human and get yeah. to paradise, isn't it? Yeah. Like <laughs> you said, it can be so simple, but some people make it hard for themselves. I'm an atheist. And I understand that, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, the religion on itself, like Christianity and, and worshiping, worshiping a God and stuff makes no sense for me. But if you think in the light of an all powerful God and, and being able to do those things, yeah, of course. I mean, why would he not, you know? So, mm. well, but thanks for clarifying anyway. And uh, that's, that's what I wanted to know. So, uh, yeah, yeah man, thanks for that, bro. Peace, peace, Yo. peace. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I think Hashim is just one of those intellectually dishonest individuals. And I think, um, you know, based upon his interaction with Gabs in the past, you know, Gabs, you, you tell a story, man. You said oh my. what you said to me. <laughs> oh, my God. Hashim is a funny man. Do you know what? Yeah. Anybody that comes to the park, have a word with Hashim. And the thing is, I tell you, um, me and Hashim have had this conversation on the Trinity before. And I broke down the Trinity to him very clear very clearly and he understood he actually was like you know what that makes sense i understand it yeah he gets it so imagine when we you know this video that you just seen with me and have hashim having the same convo it came about because i heard him you know battering one um one uh christian dude about it and then i was like hashim you're still going on about this trinity i thought we i thought we already gone past this stage you you agreed with it then he was like i know guys but th this guy did this guy wasn't there he's a he's fresh meat i was just like seriously do you know what i mean i was like serious yeah, so that's so dishonest that's crazy. And it's, yeah it's mind-blowing you know i mean crazy, when crazy. i see those clips sometimes i am really like what the heck how, how can muslims not see this you know or or christians in their faith about when they debate atheists or something but Sometimes religious people can yeah, be so dishonest intellectually. It's, it's, it really blows my mind. All right. Yeah, Let me get yeah. Brother Ibrahim on, on the panel, then afterwards, Professor. And if anybody else would like to have a go at it, actually, Megatron. After uh, Ibrahim, it's Professor, then Megatron. Go ahead, Ibrahim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that video that you guys are talking about, I watched it still. I didn't really pay much attention to it because I was doing something else at the same time. But I was watching it and I was laughing because <laughs> I was laughing uh, because it was just going in a, like a circular way. And I was I, I got what uh, Gabs was saying. Uh, I think Hashim had a bit of a point as well. Uh, but to be honest with you, the way Gabs broke it down, uh, it did make sense what he said. Uh, and from from what Gabs just said now that Hashim agreed with him, then yeah, I mean, if he agreed with him, then and and if he, uh, uh, Allah knows best if he made that fresh meat comment, but if he said that, then obviously I don't agree with that. Um, but in terms of what the other brother said, the the atheist guy, um, 
he actually made a statement. He said that Muslims believe that Allah is all powerful, yet He doesn't have the power to do, to to dwell inside a human being. Well, the way I would answer that, and I, I don't really want to get into a debate or an argument about it. I'm just going to tell you what my belief is. Um, so we believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can do everything that befits His Majesty, and whatever doesn't befit His Majesty, then that's not something that He does. Or that he will do For example in terms of lying We don't believe we, like, I'm not going to say to you Oh Allah lies Allah's all powerful He can lie Like We wouldn't say something like that Oh Allah's all powerful oh, yeah, He's going to go to the toilet now Allah's all powerful uh, He's going to sleep with women We're not, I'm not going to say something like that But to answer you What we say is Allah, We say Allah can do everything That befits his majesty And for him to dwell into his creation, we don't, well, I'm not going to say we because, you know, some Sufis believe that he does. But me, as a Salafi, uh, then no, we don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can dwell inside of, of of the creation and be omnipresent in the sense where be everywhere. Like he can be inside of a dog or a tree or in the toilet or in filthy places and stuff like that. Uh, that's not my belief. So it's not it's not the sense where we say Allah's all powerful. Oh, oh, but okay, but why can't He do that? It's not like that. And like the final statement is Allah can do everything that befits His Majesty, and if it doesn't befit His Majesty, it's not something that He will do. Go on, Callum. All right. So um, let me go over to Professor then Megatron. Go ahead, Professor. I'm just going to ask you, when are you going to do a video about my culture, um, about Rasta? When are you ready to do one? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's some of us um, on the chat waiting to talk about it. Maybe today, maybe next week. I don't know. It's up to you. All right. Next week, um, we're going to do something on Rasta. Are we saying Tuesday or Wednesday? What day is good for everybody? Tuesday you or said Wednesday? Wednesdays. Do something on Rasta. It's always Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesday. All right, Wednesday we do something on Rasta just for you. Not just right. for me. Let me go over to. Nah, just for you in specific. Yeah. Proof. All my shows are dedicated. To you. I'm not the only Rasta on the planet, you know. No, nah, but all my shows are dedicated to you. You know, if you never knew that. How can you dedicate? How can you dedicate everything to me if I'm not even a titan? Because <laughs> it's a, it's a, um, it's a. How can I put it? When I'm saying you, everybody who's listening right now, I'm speaking to them personally. Oh. So I'm telling everybody who's listening right now, my show is dedicated to you. You oh, dig? So does that mean I'm good a titan? Save, good save, Callum. Good save. Got it. Got it. <laughs> does that mean I'm a titan? Now? All right. No, no. Do you know why you're not? Should I tell you why you're not a Titan? Yeah, it's like, what is that some Avengers you? kind of? What should I do to qualify? What should I do? All right. This is how you qualify, yeah. Every Titan, yeah, doesn't ask for permission to be called or to become a Titan. Titanship cannot be offered to you or given to you. The only way you become a Titan is by taking it. It's yours. You deserve it. You take it. You wear it. <laughs> You wear it as your mantelpiece. You wear it as your crown. If you have to ask for it, you don't deserve it. Let's get it. All right. Megatron, let's get it. No problem. Talk to me, Jig. Yeah, so I've just got a couple of things to say. First of all, um, the reasons why Muslims reject the incarnation because in principle they're saying, telling us that God cannot do something which goes against their nature. However, when we read in the Hadiths, we are told that Allah descends towards heaven every th last third of the Friday night. Therefore, Allah, an infinitely transcendent God, can descend in finite three-dimensional space. Also, according to the Sunni belief, Allah, on the day of judgment, his hijab will be lifted and you shall see the face of Allah. And the Salafis take this literally. Again, how can an infinitely transcendent God be seen by finite human eyes? The only way it can be seen by finite human eyes, if 
um, God takes the form of his creation. The same way you retarded Salafis criticize us Christians is the same way the Shias criticize you for limiting Allah. It's so you Allah. Lord, Lord of mercy, God. Megatron, so boy. No theological no. Don't ever say retarded Can I come back on? again. You Megatron. can have no oh, theological oh, objection to the doctrine oh, of the Trinity, whether it's Hashim, Hamza, or any of you Salafis. Okay, okay. Hold on, one quick second, quickly, quickly. Megatron, um, unfortunately, usually I tell you guys you have no profanity, yeah? but I usually also add the extra um, bit in there, which is no ad hominems, okay? Please, no ad hominems, because we're trying to keep it a nice family-friendly vibe where everybody's in harmony with each other. Sorry. Before you made that... Sorry, um, it's before just you made someone mentioned Hashim's name and I get an allergic reaction every time I hear his name, so I do apologise. Fair enough, fair enough. I was just about to do this, you know. Bang! <laughs> you got a big bomb there. Um, so hopefully my brother's on the panel. Yeah, you do accept that apology in regards to that. He wasn't actually being direct to you guys. Hopefully he wasn't being direct. I don't think that was intention. As he quite rightly said, he gets an allergic reaction. If you haven't checked out his channel already, go check out his channel and you'll see what he means when he says he gets an allergic reaction every single time Hashim's name is mentioned. All right. Um, who wants to tackle that? Me. Why do you call Megatron? Because I'm the leader of All the right. Decepticons. Can I, okay. can, I respond to that? can I jump in? All right. Um, Ibrahim, wait one second. Let me get my brother, Mr. Beaster. Mr. Beaster, what's your name again? Omar, isn't it? Omar. Omar. Yeah, yeah, Omar. All right, let me get Omar in first because you've had a go. Go ahead, Omar. Okay. Um, the first thing, the first hadith he talked about. Um, oh, by the way, yeah, I am a Salafi, so I'm coming from that that um, perspective. Um, the first hadith he talked Jeez. about about <laughs> about Allah descending to the lowest heaven. That is true. We do believe that, um, and it's not only Friday nights; it's every night, um, and it's the last third of the night. So him saying that um, Allah, like we try to basically put Allah into a box. Um, no, we, we're, we're, no, he's saying that um, how Allah can come down to a finite realm or something like that. I think that's what he said about the universe like being uh, like limiting God to um, a finite realm. And I think we, we talked about this last time. Basically, we say that he does the action we don't ask anything about how he does the action. Um, yeah, so we say that he does descend to the last, uh, to the lowest heaven, but we don't say, we can't literally say he walks down. We can't say that he, he is only in the last third, um, sorry, he's only in the, in the lowest part of the, of the heaven or whatever. We can't limit him. We just say he does it. I'll say it, no more questions. Um, the other thing we talked about was, um, what was it about um, the hijab of Allah being removed? Oh yeah, the face of Allah. So yeah, he's right. The Salafis we say that he, the the people, you know, the, the really righteous people on the judgment will receive the reward of of seeing Allah. And he said, How can a finite how can a finite human mind possibly see an infinite uh, majestic being, something like that? Um what I say to that is, there's a difference between seeing and completely grasping something. Um, Allah, he, of course, nobody can fully grasp Allah. Allah is, you know, the most, you know, I don't really need to describe him to, well, like, we believe he's the, 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 the most powerful, etc., etc. So nobody can fully grasp what Allah is. But that doesn't mean you can't see him. You can still see him, but by seeing him, that doesn't mean you fully grasp the concept of the full being of Allah. The same way you might see a very complicated, you know, um, you might see a, a mountain or something, but you might not fully be able to grasp how it works as a human being. Mountain is not a good example, but uh, I think you get my point. Can I add to that? Okay, so... Yeah, go on. Because basically, he, he was directing at me, right? First of all, I'd just like to mention... Um, uh, you mentioned um, Hashim and Hamza being Salafi, right? I just want to lay down a criteria for you. Yeah? Before you say someone is Salafi, 
because obviously you're labeling them yeah you need to know what they're upon who they take from what books they read and then you can say they're selfie you can't just say i i, I see them on youtube because i've never seen hashim name one selfie scholar and i've never seen hamza i think you're talking about hamza the one with the ginger beard right I've never seen him. I've met him in real life, in person. I've never seen him mention one Salafi scholar either. So before you call someone a Salafi, like if you was to call Shamsi Anwar, that Salafi, of course you see their content. They bring out the books of the Salaf, the Salafi scholars alive today. And then, yeah, so before you say retarded Salafis, bring proof that these people that you're talking about is Salafi. Second of all, yeah, you mentioned a very very strange point uh the brother Omar, he all, he already dealt with the um, the thing where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends every last night but i'm going to deal with the second thing you mentioned about the uh, about you about us retarded salafis believe that um that uh, allah must come in a form of a creation for us to see him what on earth first of all we believe that on the day of judgment the best reward that we will receive according to the hadith and according to the quran is that we will get to see the face of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we say face no i'm not talking about how you can see kalam's face right now with a with two eyes a nose lips uh, a beard and so on and so forth this is not how we perceive the face of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you was to ask me right now describe the face of allah my answer will be i don't know we don't know the kafiya, meaning we don't know how Allah's attributes are. So don't try to say that we believe that uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to come in the form of his creation and uh, we can't see him unless he's in the form of creation. Who gave you the explanation? Because we don't believe that. Name me once a Salafi scholar from, from the time of the Salaf till today. Uh, that says that we can uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he reveals his his face to the people that he's gonna have a face like the face of the creation you understand so uh, bring that and we also can I just mention one thing yeah when the Ashaira or, or when the Sufis or when the Shia when you bring statements of a ulama please can you bring those statements in context don't bring half fatawa which I've noticed a lot and, I, and I, uh, I told Kalam the other day this uh, I spoke to a few brothers we we literally spoke for about five hours and they kept on bringing half fatawa half statements that like sentences that were cut off which which made us look like mujassima meaning which made us look uh, which made us sound like that we actually uh, are anthro Pomorphist, yeah, but that's not the case. So, when you bring the statements of the Salaf or the Salafi scholars today, please bring the full context, full fatwa, not half of it, not one page cut off. Bring the full thing. Barakallahu feek. That's my response. And if Kalam wants to continue, then yeah, all right, I'm gonna continue, yeah, but yeah, forgive me in it, forgive me. I'm gonna ask for your forgiveness from beforehand, yeah. Because you know me, I'm very jovial. I had to play around a little bit, yeah. But um, so my question is this, yeah. Do you confirm, yeah, that Allah descends on the um third part of the night? Uh, we we believe that He uh, descends in a way that we don't know. Like I can't deny it to you because it's from the Hadith. Yeah, the Hadith okay. clearly so, states that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala descends. All right, so. You know that he uh, supposedly, okay. So, like, bear with me in it. So, like, you know, he descends here on the third part of the night, and you know that the world is like a globe and it circulates, right? So, yeah. technically speaking, yeah, the third part of the night right now could be, let's see, somewhere in Saudi Arabia, right? <laughs> but then, you know, when the globe turns, yeah. the third part of the night could be in Asia. It could be in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. It could be in. It could be back in America and so forth. Yeah, depending on the twenty-four hours of the day, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So, so technically, so technically speaking, yeah, does Allah even descend, or does He just remain uh, um, in one position I, I whilst think, the world I, is rotating? I think the reply to this because uh, that same question was asked a few days ago, right? Uh, the answer to, to this question is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There's the one point, how much Muslims are in this world? Like 1.7 Muslims in the world, yeah? When they pray, yeah. how many Muslims are praying to Allah 
at once. Allah is listening to a million or a billion du'as at once. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also responding at the same time, right? So, so regardless of the time zone, whether it be the third night in the UK, in Saudi, the, the hadith applies. Wherever the third night is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending. So it's not, it's not like it's, okay, one time in the whole world, wherever the third night is, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending. So if the third night is in Saudi at this time, or in the UK at this time, or in China at this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending in the, in the, in the last day of the night. So, so technically, technically, yeah, if we've got our 24-hour clock here on point, yeah, we can tell where Allah is every single hour, right? <clears throat> so now you're actually like pinpointing and it. Now we, like I said, from what I can say now from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his arsh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, when it comes to, the, okay, so if you're living in the UK right now and it's the last day of the night, then yes, your, our belief is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has descended to forgive us. That's our belief. It's that. And then, you know, technically, speaking yeah because the the world like the earth globe rotates Mm -hmm. yeah technically speaking it doesn't have to keep going up and descending going up and descending because if he is for example you know like we got the our own time zone the gmt and so forth Mm -hmm. so like we're an hour um ahead Mm -hmm. no we're an hour behind france right Mm -hmm. we're hour behind france so technically speaking yeah Mm -hmm. um the third hour of the night Mm -hmm could be in let's see france uh let's see what's that country germany let's say germany's two hours ahead of us yeah so the last third hour of the night is in germany and as the globe rotates it then becomes france and then it becomes the uk so technically speaking a lot doesn't have to ascend again and descend again he just stays in one point whilst the earth is rotating does that make sense to you allah knows best okay. i don't know how- Best. Callum, I'll, what I respond to that is, yeah, basically, that's just like an unnecessary question. Um, the scholars of the past, you know, the Sahaba, they never asked anything about the companions. <laughs> when the hadith came, when the hadith came, um, and the, the hadith got related, nobody would ever ask that question. And they would call anybody who asked those kind of questions, um, you know, innovators. And I'm pretty sure you're aware of this. So the the laymen, lay Muslims, they will not be like educated enough to answer these questions. But the, the, the main answer that we always go back to is just follow the text and um, make sure you I believe it's true. But the the how, how it actually happens, like you know, you know, one time America might be in the last third of the night, and then it's Japan. But then how come? Two places, um, you know, there's always going to be one place that's in one third of the night. So, does that mean God is always there? Those kind of questions, like unnecessary questions. You just believe right. that the text, and then that's it. We don't ask how, like how. Um, so like, I'm with you. I, 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 know, I know the Salaf. On. I know the Salafi doctrine. Hold on, Megatron. I know the Salafi doctrine. But hold on, yeah, like quickly. I just want to wrap my ego in there. I just want to wrap my ego. Let me just do this real quickly. Are you saying that, right? Like, hey, yo, Kalam, you know, you're smarter than like a lot of these Sahabas in this particular current um, incident right here in it because they never asked that question is that what you're saying stuck for a laugh for saying it but is that what you're saying no chance no chance no way <laughs> yeah but technically if you rewind the video you, you know you yeah. said that right I said, I said i said that they didn't ask that question that doesn't make you smarter if you do ask that question yeah you said they weren't they the weren't question. intellectual they wasn't intellectually like no, 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 on no. it like that <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking with you. I'm just. I'm hey, trolling I, right now. I, I'm trolling in it. That's that's why I prefaced it with stuck for a lot. <laughs> we could always have a little laughing joke. Hey yo, what are you saying? What are you saying, Ibrahim? Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> what, what, what the brother Omar said, and we don't we, we don't delve into the cave here. And it's like you asking me, can Allah subhanahu wa taala? Make a rock that he can't lift. It's one of them questions, and it you know, we don't we don't delve into these issues, and it. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, okay, Megatron, Megatron, hold on, hold on, one second, yeah, one second. I know Megatron wants to go in, guys wants to go in, yeah, but I want to mi- mix it up because I got I got a feeling here. You're not gonna throw some some fireballs and comments at my brother, yeah, and I'm trying to keep quickly, them good, quickly, quickly. <laughs> I right, go on, guys, go on, guys. 
I just wanted to find out for sure. So, um, just because I know you're going to move on to the next topic. So the uh, the the two brothers, um, two Muslim brothers that were just speaking out. So they basically they affirm they agree that um, Allah just he does descend to in in his creation. And so he does. So he he does come into his so creation. The narration says to the um, I think it says the lowest part of the heavens, or something like that, close something close to that. But we can't say we can't definitely say um, that it's going to be part of the universe because if you go into like you know how we believe you know, like everything is made um, there's like different levels of heavens and some some scholars might say that the heavens represent universes some might say that um, other things so we can't definitely say it's part of the creation like, inside okay. our universe. Okay, so the seven heavens, whichever heaven, not, not our universe, but the seven heavens, um, were they created? Uh, yes. And who were they created by? Allah. Okay, so he does come down into his creation then? No, we don't know oh, how, though, that's the thing. That's the thing that's that's not, not about yeah. how he does it, but he does come into his creation. It's not, I, I know, I know, I know the how is obviously, you, obviously we don't know how, if it's a, you know, if he flies down or wherever he does. But he does come down into his creation. That's that's the main thing. He does come okay. into his creation. Uh, okay, yeah, you could say that. Wow, okay, that? so 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 then now, so but now, now God I, is gonna I, refute me. from this moment now, I don't so, want to hear any. I don't want to be hearing any Muslims. Um, I speak as Korda. Now I was saying <laughs> Allah present. does not come into creation. He's just outside in time. He's outside time and space. Because right Gabs, now you just got it here. Yeah, go on. Yeah, Gab's just smashed this in basically now. Because Brother Omar said that Allah can come into the creation. But Gab's don't really, you know, with this particular hadith here, because I don't have the answers right now, uh -huh. I can't really say yes or no on it. So when I do get the answer, I'm going to send it to Kalam on Facebook and he'll send it to you. Yeah? Oh, okay, okay. Gabs, you can't, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not confirming your, your like, line of reasoning, but I'm saying that could be interpreted by some people as that. But it could also be interpreted by other people. Like if you go to the actual narration, looking at the word, I think um, it says something about dunya as well. It says something about dunya. Um, so it, it might not even mean he enters the heavens. It might just he goes to the edge of something. You can't, it's, it's a bit too, too um, what do you call it? Um, like really technical. Oh, it's really technical. Yeah, I know you're saying, but do you know what? Is, do you know what makes it all technical when you all these words like to the edge and like he comes like it's like it's like he's getting to the edge of something because because then your human mind yeah, starts picturing it. coming to the edge of a cliff or you know getting to the edge of the swimming pool or you know what I mean. So when yeah, you're saying, oh, he doesn't come in, he just he just basically goes right to the edge and just looks. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 when you use them type of like you know them English terms, it just it just sounds a bit funny, yeah. but. You know, from from having what you guys said from the hadith, to me, from from reading it, you know, I know you say you know um, the scholars have their own opinions and they got their answers for it, but from reading that hadith, it sounds like yeah, Allah comes down into His creation. You know, the seven the seventh heaven. You know, um, obviously the seven heavens were created; they weren't always there. So if they were created by Allah, then and He's descending down through through the through the seven or through whatever whatever number there is, then yeah, He. He comes down into his creation, isn't it? I mean, if you know these kind of questions, it, like you can always just say, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a way to, to go back and forth because you can just say, He's God, you can do whatever He wants. It's kind of like it just stops there. Yeah, like, yep, yep. hold God, on, let yeah. me quickly um, make sure we can get some quick fire questions and so forth. Okay, Megatron, I'm going to get you, trust me, I'm going to get you, but I know we've got some guy called Rask. Raskins of Rome. Raskin, yeah. how are you doing, King? Yeah, I'm not bad yourself. Yeah, I'm well, man. Talk to me, man. What are you saying? Yeah, so you lot were saying how, like, could God come into the creation or, you know, make him make himself, like, come inside to our dimension kind of thing. Is that what you were talking about? Uh, half off, yes. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Well... The way I think of it is with that he is everything. He is everywhere. So it wouldn't be possible for him to hold on. Singular. Hold on, hold on. Let me just quickly wait, 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 wait. Before you continue, what, what are you exactly? 
And I, yeah, he was, I, no, I, was, I like just I study philosophy and try and follow my life upon philosophies that sound uh, applicable okay, to continue. modern day life. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's, a, sure, there's, a, just... there's a concept called the all. So instead of it being one construct that is able to go here and there and to delegate different things, it's the concept of the all. So he would technically be everywhere at every single time. So for everywhere him, at every when. So he's everywhere all the time. So it's kind of like if you look at how I could explain it is if you look at the first sentence of the Bible, I don't know if it's the first sentence or the last or somewhere in between the first verse, it says man was made in God's image. So, okay, there has been many translations and everything gets lost in translations, but image is a noun. So if you look at the other meaning of image, it's imagination. So we are kind of inside his mind playing by the song that you know playing by this rhythmic song that we all that we're all stuck to and we all are part of so for him to singular himself and then come inside that it wouldn't be for me from what i've read something feasible or logical that's my that's my concept of god anyway mm. is that hermetic philosophy what philosophy are you reading yeah yeah you know got the nail on the head yeah yeah that's you know that, what, so, that's that I'm sorry, bro. right there baby I, what, I just want to add something to what our brother said because when he said that sign just came one of the scriptures came into my mind because then just him saying that what came into my mind was you know uh i think it's in the bible where it says and through through him things are made possible so if you're saying so like what the brother is saying if this is the mind you know if we are all in the mind and obviously the mind of God, and he's saying through him things are made possible. Yeah, things are possible. So in this mind that we're all in, things are possible. You know, people create things. Uh, trees are created. People create cars, planes, rockets, missiles, all kinds of things. Do you know what I mean? People put a well, supposedly I don't know. There's people out there. You know, man might have gone to the moon. You know, some people think man did go to the moon. Some people don't think. So you know, you have satellites in space. So I, I kind of hear what you're saying. So if you think about it like this, a nice analogy for it would be Shakespeare can write many books and many plays and create all these characters and narratives and storylines so much to the point where they actually seem lifelike. Because when you read the book, you get so involved in it, you actually begin to think of these people as being something, obviously not real, but something lifelike. So Definitely. those characters within those books could they say, I'm God, or I'm Shakespeare? No, but they can say, I am a part of it. I'm a part of his creation within his mind. So could Shakespeare come inside to one of his books and start playing? No, but we are part of it all together. It's called the all. The all is the all, basically. That's it. I'm a part of all and all is a part of me i'm one with all and all is one with me i can do all exactly. that i wish and all as long as i wish is to stay in all yeah oh um, um, man even if you look at atom all right let me quickly let, i just one last thing just to, to hold on my brother yeah go on go on go on yeah, yeah, let me because I need to I need to make sure I get everybody involved. Um, I need to get Megatron in here real quickly. Megatron, because we're yeah. running out of time, family. We're running out of time. Go ahead. The Salafis have a strange way of approaching things. Whenever you ask them a difficult question, they, their self-defense mechanism is fallen into the pseudo-intellectual rubbish of Allah does whatever befits his majesty. What the hell does that mean? According to your Salafia scholars, Allah has a face, Allah has hands, Allah has fingers. Allah has a shin, Allah has legs, Allah has a limb, Allah has a left side, Allah has a right side. So you've got all of these anthropomorphic features. Let me ask you this question. Does Allah has a male appendage in light of the fact that he's got all of these other parts? Please answer that question. And in is his male appendage um, in a manner befitting of his own majesty? Please answer that question. Beautiful question. Beautiful question. Um, can I just clarify something here? Yeah? Uh, you said it's the Salafi scholars that say Allah has a face, Allah has hands, Allah has shins, Allah has legs. Is the Prophet Muhammad a Salafi scholar? 
Good question. Hello? Anyone? Listen, listen, just answer the question, please. Okay, I'll answer the question then. So, assuming by his uh, his uh, question that the Prophet Muhammad is now a Salafi scholar, according to him, because verily it's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who affirmed as shin for Allah. And unless he's saying, well, yeah, actually, I'm not going to say that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he mentions in the Quran, his hands. So it's not the Salafi scholars who say, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself who said uh, that he has yadain. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself who affirms for himself a wajh. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So it's like, it's like he's claiming against us that we're pulling these things out of a hat and saying, oh, randomly, Allah has this, Allah has that. What from what you keep saying Salafi scholars? No, Allah says He has hands, and what we say is we affirm this. How He has hands, we don't know. The way Allah has a face, do we affirm it? Yes. The way He has a face, we don't know. So, give a proper question, a nice question in a nice way, and then uh, we can we can delve into that. Inshallah. Does He have a male? Does he have a male appendage in a manner befitting of his majesty? What, what can you define male appendage? It sounds, it sounds like, sorry, it sounds like... Oh, I don't think we need to go there, do we, really? No, 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 let him, no, let him, no, no, let him. No, what... no, let's just move sounds... on, I think that's, that's just kind of, you know, if we start asking like... about Jesus, would you be happy about that, Megatron? One, one, no, no, I'll be fine about it. One second. The Sunni interpretation is Allah has these various different anthropomorphic features, but then they say, oh, he's got a fingers in a manner befitting his majesty, whatever that means. In light of the fact that he's got a face, he's got fingers, he's got hands, he's got limbs, he's got a leg, he's got shins, he's got a left side, a right side. Does he also have a male appendage? Please answer this question in light of the fact that he's got all these other anthropomorphic features. Megatron, what do you gain from no, what do you gain from that? No, 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 what do you gain from the answer? We only follow what the text says. We only follow what the text. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let me speak to him. Ta- oh, bro, bro, are you scared of me, bro? No, I. What do you say? Let me say. Debate me. Who, who, who's that speaking? I don't know. Some imbecile. Sorry, Megatron. I don't think you need to. I want to debate Buddha on low IQs. Okay, okay yeah, when you message Buddha privately. We'll get that in private, yeah. Nah, nah, on here. Bro, we're speaking about a topic now. You can't just interrupt like that, bro. I want to discuss with Buddha, though, bro. Okay, I've just told you we're discussing something, and have some etiquette, inshallah. If you want to discuss that with Buddha, when the topic's gone, then, you know, mention it. Is that okay? Okay, so he's he's okay. First of all, the Megatron. What what is he? Is he a Christian, Muslim, atheist? What what is he? I'm a Decepticon. No, I'm asking. I'm asking a serious question. Like, what? Why are you? I think he's a Christian because Buddha said something about was talking about Jesus. Jesus. Okay, so he mentioned about does Allah have a male appendage I don't know why on earth you're asking that uh, because if you know Salafi so much you should know that we only affirm what Allah said for himself does Allah say he has such attributes no so okay can I just um, show you something very quickly I need to turn my camera on here one second let me show you something Uh, okay Right, where's my camera on this? Uh, how do I change it? Okay, can you see? Well, okay, this is no disrespect to anyone, but I just, want, just wanted to give an example. Yeah, this is how the Christians uh, see um, their deity. Yeah, this is uh, supposedly Jesus. So, so what? So when, when not all Christians, not all Christians not all recognize Christians. that. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. sorry not sorry. Buddha. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Not all Christians do say this, but um, I'm going by the Christians that do. Yeah. So this is their belief of God. Yeah. When 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 the Muslims say Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has hands and a face, we don't say look Allah has a face like this. Allah has hands like this. Allah has fingers like this. So. 
when you're saying we're giving Allah human attributes, where because we're saying Allah can hear, we're saying Allah can see, we're saying Allah can speak. Yeah, yeah, we're not giving Allah these human attributes because sight, hearing, hello. Oh, how God silences someone. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Okay. Um, can I get my other brother to take over then? Oh, he's oh gone. my mic, my mic turned off, man. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know how that happened. Forgive me, yeah. Um, right. well, uh, w- w- where did I cut off at? Uh, you were comparing the, the image of Jesus. Oh, did he cut off then? Oh my days! I was I just talking to myself? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. So when I had the image of Jesus up here, we don't say that um, Allah is like this at all. We say Allah can hear, Allah can see, Allah can speak. You know, these are attributes that humans have. But the way Allah hears, he speaks. Is we don't know how this is in a way that befits His Majesty, right? Likewise, when He has a face, hands, and a shin, and so on and so forth, we don't know how. We are affirming what Allah said, not what the Salafi scholar says, like he, like he says anyway. But yeah, that's my response. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in about two minutes anyway. So if everyone wants to continue, let me answer. Let me answer a quick question before you go, real. Yeah, go. <clears throat> Do you think that when Allah sent His message, it was some, it was th- so that humans could understand what He wants? Of course, if we didn't understand, then how would we understand? This is my point, because yeah. if you say. I have fingers, I don't really know how any other fingers look as a human. Do you understand that? If you say you've got a face, mm-hmm. Allah would have must known to us what we think a face is, correct? No, but so, to say, the... so to say I've got a face and a hand and mm-hmm. a shin, yep. you're actually saying this person is a human deity. So what mm-hmm. Metro- Metrotron is asking, does he also have the rest of his body parts, like okay. a human do? Okay, I, I understand your question. Is that Sadiq, yeah? That's, that's correct. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Sadiq, um, to answer your question, like, like I said, we only affirm what Allah affirmed for himself. So, you know, Allah didn't say he has a male appendage, so we don't affirm that. The Prophet didn't say that either, so we don't affirm it. So everything that the, uh, Allah affirmed for himself, we affirm it. And whatever the Prophet affirmed for Allah, we affirm that also. Also, when you say that oh, we're, the hum- uh, we're humans and, uh, and what are we meant to know by face and hands, I mean, that's why, you, that's why you read the explanation of these verses. That's why you go to the companions of the Prophet and they should have to explain these 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 uh, uh, these that's intricate right. features like that's the hands, right. like yeah, the face. So like I said, Allah... He also came to different prophets, correct? Yeah, yeah, of course. So he came to Moses. Yeah. When he came to Moses, did he not come to Moses face to face? Face to face? Is yeah. that the Muslim belief? No, I'm asking, yeah, it is. I'm asking you, according to Christians, when he came to Moses, who was written about also in your Quran... Sadiq, I can't not... speak for Christians, bro. I can't speak for them. No, I'm not it, asking you to speak for them. the same religion. What are you talking? So oh, let Sadiq speak. Yeah, go on. I'm not saying that you should speak for them. I'm saying mm-hmm. Christianity and Islam are the same religion. There's other prophets that has seen Allah directly and spoke to him. Like when he came to Abraham, Abraham bowed down in front of him. That means he was on earth. I, I don't have that belief, bro. I don't have that belief. Okay. I, I don't hold the belief that um, that uh, Allah. Uh, uh, Musa alayhi salam saw Allah face to face that, uh, that Musa alayhi salam literally saw the face of Allah I don't have that belief No But he okay, did bro. speak to him though Bro, bro Let, let Sadiq make his point man like, I mean he, Sadiq bro, You guys are said preaching to... man let, let, let other people join in as well Okay if, Okay join in then What's your question? Have you got no, a question? Uh, continue No you want to join in What's your question bro? Go on no, you know, you said you don't speak for Christians. Yeah. You you said that, right? Any? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's the same religion. Christianity and Islam is the same religion. I don't believe that, no. All right. So, uh, so Allah is not the God of the Bible. Sorry? Allah is not the same God that appeared to the other prophets in the Bible. Allah is the same deity 
that appeared to Moses, Jesus, Abraham. Well, that's what those... I'm saying. So when he appeared yeah. to Moses, are you saying that the Christian version of him appearing to Moses face to face? I don't believe that, no. I don't believe that's correct, no. So you're saying uh, that the Torah is an error, is an error? No, I, I believe, as all Muslims, well, not, I can't say all, but most Muslims believe that the Bible is, is fabricated and so is the Torah. That's my personal belief. So any kind of instance where you say Moses or, or, or anyone else literally saw Allah's face, then no, I don't believe that, no. Okay. What about the night journey? Sorry? The night journey? Yeah, of course we believe in that. Doesn't the Quran say though that um, it's a continuation or a reformation of the previous books? Not necessarily. Um, obviously, we, we affirm. We, let me reply to that. We affirm that these books were obviously sent down by Allah, but uh, we believe that uh, um, uh, these books were obviously corrupted and changed, which they were, which is which is proven. So you're saying the recent ones, you don't believe in them? So like the, the Bible, of, so the Injil that, that, that Isa alayhi salam had, that Jesus had, we, I believe in that, but I don't believe that Injil is here today, no. And it's pure form. And it's pure form, correct, yeah, yeah. But that's a better way to say it, bro. Bro, do you believe like the moon is a hologram? Sorry? You know the moon? Yeah. I swear this guy is a troll, you know. Yeah, proper troll, isn't it? Uh, like, uh, bro, can you just make, you, a your point, uh, make a good point? Yo, brother, are we going to discuss the low IQ or not? Yeah, when your IQ improves, yeah, definitely. Inshallah. Can I, can I just go back to a point that um, I don't think the kids answered and a question got answered fully? I just wanted to add. I think he said basically, if God, if God wanted us to understand his message, why would he... Um, Omar, Omar, you know your mic, you, your papa sound low, bro. If you can speak a bit up. Okay, is this better? Yeah, that's way better. Basically, um, Rich Kid said, like, if he wants, if God wanted us to understand his his message, why would he say things like fingers and and uh, face, etc., and then um, not allow us to think about anything other than human characteristics? I think that's what you're saying. Metaphorical. Okay, that's what some Muslims believe. We don't believe that. Some Muslims do believe that. Um, but, as, uh, huh? Am I Shia? I'm not Shia. Shia. I'm not Shia. Why you? Salafi. Salafi, yeah. So, okay. um, what I would say is Allah also said in His message, "Laisa kamithli shi'un." That means that there's nothing like Him. So I don't think it contra it contradicts in his message to say I have fingers and also say that there's nothing like his fingers. He gives us a description of himself um, and also says that there's nothing like him as well. And there's nothing like that come, come, come close to his description. So yeah, I think that I hope that answers your question. I think it's metaphorical, though. I don't think it actually means he has fingers and arms. Or symbolical. Um, that's what metaphorical some or symbolical. Um, that, yeah, uh, 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 that. Raskin, yes. Yeah, so some Muslims believe that. But the Salafis, we take the, the literal meaning that Allah has hands in But we don't know how they are, you see. Okay, hold yeah, on one second. If, if it, Family, one like second. Allah having a throne. Mm -hmm. uh, Lel, we've reached the two-hour mark right now. So unfortunately, family is getting heated. He's just about to go down. But um, we have to close down the show, man. We have to close down the show. I can't allow this to continue for any uh, longer because it's a madly um, uh, edit off the shows into two parts. So what we're going to do right now is go off air. Yep, keep your mics muted. We're going to go off air and we're going to continue these discussions. But let me know in the comment section, have you been enjoying the show so far? Let me know, family. And please hit up the like button and keep your mics muted, please. Otherwise, I'm going to have to inject you, okay? Um, so, yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. Why do you always start these so late? I know, I know. I apologize. I need to get back to starting these shows like 9, 9.30, like we used to do back in the day.
But to, to be honest with you, I'm so easy, you know. I'd rather not do any shows. <laughs> That's so bad of me. Um, if Muslims can believe the jinn can inhabit a body, what's wrong with believing the spirit of God can inhabit a human? Jesus. Good question. Very good question. We're going to continue, um, you know, with this off air. I'm definitely going to encourage you guys to hit the like button, okay? Because you lot are tuning in right now. Yeah, over 160 people tuned in and we're not getting enough likes. So it's either you lot are here and not liking the show. Like, if you don't like the show, let us know the reason why you don't like the show. But if you are here and you're still watching, give us some like buttons. Let us know that you appreciate us being up with you guys till damn near two o'clock in the morning. All right, family. But right now we're going to sign off and I hope to see you guys tomorrow or another day. Or if you have the opportunity to, please um, click the link that's down below. Click the link that's down below and join in with us. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace and love. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs>